Hey everybody, I'm JJ Johnson. You're watching Reality Survival. Today what we're going to do is we're going to take a look, real quick look at the uh, Stovetech Firefly Lantern and Stove. Pretty cool device, uh, basically. It is a biofuel uh, stove slash lantern. And the idea is you put some of the biofuel, you know, sticks, pine cones, wood pellets, whatever the case may be down in here. Um, it kind of sends a flame right up through the center portion here and then you can cook on the top platform. Well, there's a glass globe right here that will also allow you to use the light from the flame in your campsite, um, you know, while you're out camping and all that kind of stuff. So this is brand new, I haven't used it yet. Um, we're gonna see, you know, how hard it is to get a fire lit and keep going and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so I'll go ahead and assemble this. Just take kind of the main body here. Again, I don't know the technical names. Um, stick it down inside of there like that. Then you'll have the grill component. Toss that down in there. And at that point, you're pretty much ready to light. You can go ahead and um, lock the, the grill top. It has kind of a, see if you can see that, like a notched area where It'll fit together so that you can lift this up kind of in one piece when it's hot. So that's kind of cool. So throw that out of the way there. Now I've got to go ahead and gather some fuel and uh, you know see how it's going to light. I've uh, kind of gathered up some materials here for getting a fire going in here. I've got some uh, some cedar bark. Uh, to use as tinder, I'll just use a little Bic lighter. I've got some pencil lead sized, um, you know, sticks from various types of, of trees, uh, from um, cedar to mulberry to, I don't know, walnut, whatever, whatever I could grab pretty much. And then I've also got some uh, pencil sized stuff here as well. I notice I've got more of that so I can sustain it after I get going. I'm not going to need quite as much, hopefully, to get the fire going. Now, loading this thing up, um, kind of what they recommend is, is that you kind of put in some of the bigger stuff uh, towards the bottom and the outside, and then, um, then you fill the center and the top with some of the smaller stuff that's going to catch a little bit better. And so that's what I'm going to do, just kind of follow their instructions. And the unit does have some limited instructions, but it doesn't have a whole lot. Now I'm going to take some of the pencil lead size stuff and throw that in here now obviously I've never lit this before so I don't know if this will work or not but just kind of doing it chaotically I want there to be plenty of air in there so that the, the you know the draft will work and um, and the flame will go now I'm going to take this this uh, cedar nest cedar bark nest and I'm just going to kind of stuff it down in and around here feels pretty dry. I can feel just a touch of moisture in it. Uh, now I'm going to take just a little bit of sticks and kind of put over the top of that as well. Just give it something to burn on to, just in case. Alright, so now we'll go ahead and light this up, see how it does. Whoa. <laughs> Alright, let me just hold this back. Like I said, I thought I felt a little moisture in there, but I think it will go. Probably gonna take a little time to get going to burn down.
Okay, I think now I can kind of see that it's got a pretty good draft coming um, up through the center there. It's actually drawing the flame kind of into the center. So I'm going to see if I can set this on here, see how that works out. take a minute to clear that out. Or I may have just put it out, who knows. <laughs> Oops. Well, it's still going. Yikes. Not got my finger. Not sure if you guys can see that or not, but there is actually a flame coming up through the center. There you can probably see it some. And then out the top. It's a little transparent, but it is starting to get out. Yeah. Getting some pretty good heat going on there. So make sure that's stable enough take the old heavy cover canteen see if I can sit on there eh, kind of at an angle might be better to use the canteen cup just got some old pond water in here gonna boil that up give you a little better idea of kind of the concept on how this thing works here. Pretty ingenious. Once it gets going, it looks like it does pretty well. finally got a boil and let me take a look and see you know with all the messing around with everything it looks like it ended up taking me about I don't know 20 minutes or so to get a get a boil on there again a lot of that's learning curve though because I've never used this before so let's try the wood pellets now Okay guys, I'm not going to record the whole thing here, and I'll cut some of this out, but uh, just kind of want to show you how I got this set up. This is the wood pellets. I basically filled it up. It doesn't really tell me in the instructions how much to do this. And then I've got that little fire starter in there, so I'm going to light that up and see how this does. Okay guys, so if you can see right here, what I had to do is kind of build a little fire on top of the pellets. I had the pellets in the bottom, and then I've taken some of the little sticks, lit them with the fire starter I had and then I'm kind of using that to spread the fire around to the other pellets. Um, otherwise it was just burning kind of light there in the center. And I think this is going to help it get going a little bit faster, but we'll see how that goes. Okay guys, so we got the wood pellets going and uh, kind of used the sticks to get it going like I showed. Now we'll go ahead and uh, see how this does at uh, boiling some water. So we'll get some cold water just so it's kind of a fair test against the other style doing it with sticks. I'll stick it on there and get her started and it's about 225 or so now. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. 
Yeah, maybe 225. Um, so we'll see what it is when we uh, get boiling. Okay, so it's just been a few minutes. I just want to see how much fuel it's been burning. Okay, so it's still going on. On uh, well, the sticks and the and the um, and the pellets as well. Let's see if we can take a closer look at that. It's hard to see the pellets. They turn black and kind of look like they're part of the part of the sticks it's actually not so that the, the pellets definitely burn a long time and it certainly seems to be a more stable um, you know kind of fuel source for this okay guys so we got to a boil it's about 240 um, and it probably started boiling about a minute ago, so it's probably about 2.39. Um, so, you know, 15 minutes, something like that. I think that's what it was. I don't remember exactly when we started. Um, but it definitely got it boiling. And the benefit um, is that I didn't have to, to change the wood or the fuel this time. So let's take a look and see how much fuel is left in here. Okay, so um, just taking a look and see how much fuel's in here after boiling. It's only dropped about a quarter of an inch or so. And after seeing this burn, I think it may be possible that I probably screwed up before and was leaving way too much space in here. Um, what I should have done is probably jam pack that thing as full of you know, fuel as possible and then let it burn from the top down. Um, the way I was doing it, it was kind of burning both top down and bottom up, and it was burning it too fast. So that's a learning experience for me. I've not used these before. I think if you get the hang of it, this could be a, a more efficient way to do it than what I had with in the beginning of this video. Because this way, with the fuel pellets, definitely burned a lot better and a lot more efficient. Let me go over just kind of my impressions after using it a little bit. So the first thing is, is I think that Stove Tech would probably benefit its customers by putting a little more instructions in the uh, in with it, and I say that coming from the perspective of I'm I'm very proficient at building fire and that kind of thing, but me personally I'm not very proficient at using a biofuel type stove like this, um, and some simple instructions on how and you know how much fuel and all that kind of stuff to jam down in there and all that I think could be helpful um, we ended up kind of getting it figured out in the end um, but a little more guidance there may help also um, on the cons side of it I really don't know why the globe is you know all brown and and all that kind of stuff now I'm assuming that probably if I take it home and I wash it up and then do it again it probably won't have that problem it's probably some sort of film from the factory or something like that but I'll let you know you'll see that here in, in the pictures in a minute uh, whether or not it's still brown and if it washed out and everything uh, construction quality construction quality on this is excellent it really is good I think the stove is gonna last as long as you want to use it you know um, I don't know for sure but I think the globe is probably a standard style lantern kind of globe it'll probably if you break this one, you could probably get like a Coleman Lantern one or what, or whatever to replace it. I don't know that for sure, but that's what it looks like. Um, price is a little high. Uh, usability, I think it is very usable for people who live in an area or, or go and do recreation and stuff in an area where you can't have an open fire, you know, and, and you, um, you've got to keep it contained, you know, and that kind of thing. And so by using this, you're going to be able to do that. You're still going to have the feel, the look and the feel of the fire because the lantern, the way it looks, it kind of puts out that campfire feel and everything. Um, and then you're going to be able to cook on it as well. So it's kind of got some multi, you know, uses, multi purposes there. And I think that's pretty cool. It is a little bit heavy, um, 
but again, it's it's constructed really, really well, and it's going to work well um, for a long term. There's nothing in it that can really break. There's nothing in it that, um, you know, is going to go wrong. Well, when I say the break, obviously you could break the globe, but as far as the, the metal part of it and the construction and all that kind of stuff, it's going to last a long time, and I don't think there's going to be any issues with that. It does boil water. It takes a little longer um, than, you know, would be optimum. Um, I think it was around 15 or so minutes with the uh, wood pellets and um, maybe it's about 14 and then about 20 or so with the wood because I ended up having to stop and you know um, refill the wood and stuff because I probably wasn't packing it right. Had I packed it down more in there we may have been able to get the time down a little bit lower. And what I may do is I may do another, another video on this after using it a few more times and see if I'm a little more proficient at it. But anyhow, you know, I'll, I'll throw the link down to uh, Stove Tech where you can get the Stove Tech Firefly down in the description below. It always helps me out if you go down and uh, click that link and check it out. And, you know, just look at some of their other products and stuff. They've got some bigger, uh, some bigger products as well. Um, some bigger kind of biofuel stoves and, and stuff like that. They're a little larger. So, as always, I definitely appreciate it when you click the thumbs up button, when you share it with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. And don't forget to live the six Ps. Proper prior preparation prevents poor performance. Stay safe, guys. Hey, guys, thanks for sticking with me to the end. If you're still here now, then that tells me you might have a little extra time on your hands and maybe you can go check out some of these other cool channels. Uh, these guys are great guys. They are really trying to give back to uh, the Second Amendment movement. And I think you're going to find a lot of cool stuff on their channels, uh, from gear reviews to survival, prepping, and good old-fashioned comic relief, competitive shooting, just a whole array of outdoor-type activities and things that manly men like. So check them out.